Hi, it's Michelle, and I'm here today to do a tag. I can't remember the name of the tag. <laughs> I'll put it up here somewhere. But I was tagged in this tag. I think it's called the name tag or the initial tag. How it works is you say the title of a book of um, each of the first letters of your name. And I was tagged by AJ done reads and writes and I really liked the way that they did theirs where they did one book that they have read and another book that was on their TBR. I thought that was kind of fun. So that's what I'm going to do is do it the way that they did it. So let's just get started. Hi Marty. Uh oh, here comes Marty. <laughs> We're in for a fun day. Oh no, that's Zelda. Sorry. It's hard when you have two black cats. Sometimes it's hard to tell them apart. M. The book that I've read that I want to recommend to you is The Murderous Haircut of the Mayor of Bel Air by Philip Matas. This book is a cozy mystery and it's about a girl named Danica who's a, she's a hairstylist and when she touches the back of people's heads, she sees what's in their mind. Just a quick vision of it. So if somebody is thinking about how gassy they are. <laughs> Maybe they shouldn't have had something for lunch. She can see that. And if, no matter what it is, she can see what they're thinking. So it's kind of nice because she can visualize what kind of haircuts they want. But then she sees a dead body is what somebody's thinking about. And she thinks, oh my gosh, who is this dead body? <laughs> Where did they come from? What's going on? So she decides to try to figure out who the dead body is and then who killed them because she wants the reward money. She's broke. We've all been there. I thought it was such a good book. It really kept me guessing and I really liked the protagonist. She was just so flawed and human and I love that because, well, I like flawed people. I don't like perfect people. I mean, I'm not perfect, obviously. <laughs> None of us are, right? I can't wait. There's a second one coming out. As soon as it comes out, I will let you know. And then a book that is on my TBR stack uh, that starts with M is The Mothers by Britt Bennett. It begins with a secret. It is the last season of high school life for Nadia Turner, a rebellious, grief-stricken 17-year-old beauty. Mourning her mother's recent death, she takes up with the local pastor's 21-year-old son, Luke. They are young it's not serious, but the secret that results from this teen romance and the subsequent cover-up will have an impact that goes far beyond their youth, as Nadia hides the truth from everyone, including Aubrey, her best friend. The years move quickly. Soon, Nadia, Luke, and Aubrey are full-fledged adults, still shadowed by the choices they have made in their youth and by the constant nagging question. What if they had chosen differently? The possibilities of the road not taken are a relentless haunt, an urgent and provocative debut from an important new voice. The Mothers is a book about community and ambition and love and friendship and living up to the expectation in contemporary Black America. And I think this was Britt's first book. So I, I'm looking forward to reading it because I really loved uh, the Vanishing Half. <laughs> Zelda. Zelda is on my lap. Look at this. She's on my lap and she's just going nuts. She keeps kneading my leg over here. She's purring and drooling. And that's the fun of having cats. You just never know when you're going to get this kind of attention. <laughs> I. I selected The Invited as a book that I recommend. It's by Jennifer McMahon. This book is about a woman named Helen and her husband, Nate, and they decide to throw all caution to the wind and buy a piece of land in the middle of nowhere, somewhere they have only been one time, and build a house or renovate a house that already exists. Well, it ends up being haunted, and it's just a really good book. It's a very good book haunting book and it ties into the past and 
ancestral memory, which I find to be a very fascinating subject. So if you're interested in the our family history and how that makes us who we are now, or if you're interested in a good haunting story, I definitely recommend this one. Okay, a book on my TBR is I'll Take You There by Wally Lamb. This book is about Felix, a film scholar who runs a Monday night movie club in what was once a vaudeville theater. And one evening while setting up a film in the projectionist's booth, he's confronted by a ghost of Lois Weber, a trailblazing motion picture director from Hollywood's silent film era. Lois invites Felix to revisit, and in some cases relive, scenes from his past as they are projected onto the cinema's big screen. In these magical movies, the medium of film becomes the lens for Felix to reflect on the women who profoundly affected his life. There's his daughter, Eliza, a Gen Y writer for New York Magazine who is trying to align her postmodern feminist beliefs with her lofty career ambitions. His sister, Frances, with whom he once shared a complicated bond of kindness and cruelty, and Verna, a fiery would-be contender for the 1951 Miss Rheingold competition, a beauty contest sponsored by a Brooklyn-based beer manufacturer that became a marketing phenomenon for two decades. Against the backdrop of a kaleidoscopic com convergence of politics and pop culture, family secrets, and Hollywood iconography, Felix gains an enlightened understanding of the pressures and trials of the women closest to him and of the feminine ideals and feminist realities that all women of every era must face. Moving on to C, a book that I recommend if you like YA books is The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. This one is a book about a family who has all um, disowned each other and these cousins have to go work for their grandmother for the summer because they found out that she's dying soon and if they don't go work for her for the summer she's going to disinherit them. She's apparently very rich. And that's all that I really want to say because I want to leave the book as a surprise for you. I would say that if you like Flowers in the Attic, read this book. It's a little bit lighter. It's not disgusting <laughs> like Flowers in the Attic was. There's no incest going on, but it's um, just a fun, entertaining book. And it's, it's definitely, you know, I mean, it is a YA book, so it's not too intense, but it is a fun thriller. I definitely recommend it. Can you hear Zelda purring? It's so to the point where it's hard to remember what I'm saying. You keep disturbing me, Zelda. <laughs> okay. All right. The Claiming of Sleeping Beauty by Anne Rice. This one, I don't have to read the back. I can tell you right off the top of my head. This is a erotic take on Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll let you know what I think after I read it, but that's what this is about. <laughs> H, The House Next Door by Darcy Coates. This is about a woman named Josephine that moves into a house that is said to be next door to a haunted house, and nobody wants to stay in this house that she's moved in very long. So I think if I remember correctly, she got a really good deal on it. Um, I read this a year ago, so I'm a little fuzzy on it. But it was... A really good book. I really enjoyed it. I remember I gave it five stars, but this book definitely has me wanting to read another Darcy Coates book because, and I know she's kind of a popular booktube author, but it, it really was a good book though. And I, I do want to read more of them. So I plan to, but if you haven't read this, I recommend it. And my H book that is in my TBR stack is Halsey Street. And this is by Nama Coster. Okay. 
I'm going to read you a blurb off of this one, not the synopsis, because I just like this blurb. It says, With this debut, Nama Coster has established herself as a major new talent of literary realism. A tale of what happens when your own past is rendered as unknowable as your future. This family story looks at all the different ways loss defines us. Brooklyn is under trial for Coster's grand family in a way any New Yorker can recognize, but Coster goes the additional mile to investigate the nuances of the gentrified and the gentrifiers. Race, ethnicity, and class are masterfully challenged in this narrative of self-discovery and the quest to preserve one's heritage while honoring life-saving transformation. A brilliant debut. That really just makes me want to dive right into the book. <laughs> On to the ease. This book has had a lot of love, as you can see. Not just from me, but from whomever read it before me. But I love this book. It's called Eleanor Oliphant, Everything is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. I don't know if you've read this, but oh my gosh, it's so good. It's about a woman who struggles with social anxiety and I'm trying to remember. Of course, my notes are like not here anymore. I need to read it again. This is a really good way of... There's two blurbs in here that really say it in a way that I just can't. Endearing, a whip-smart read, perfectly paced, odd, shocking, and hilarious. A fascinating story about loneliness, hope, tragedy, and humanity. And then the next one says, Like a contemporary Jane Eyre, Honeyman's debut will have you rooting for Eleanor with every turning page. I loved this story. I did too. I really loved it. It took place in Glasgow and I just, this is another one of those books where the main character is, she's so human that I love her. I really do. And I was rooting for her the whole way through. I read it very quickly and I just really thought it was an amazing book. It's also coming out as a movie. I don't know when, but if you're interested in watching the movie, this might be a good time to read the book first. I might read it again because I read it just over a year ago and I'm already fuzzy. I've been reading so many books. I don't remember as many details as I thought I would of this, <laughs> but it's so good. Okay. The first E in my uh, TBR stack is educated. You guys probably know what this one is. Educated is an account of the struggle for self-invention. It is a tale of fierce family loyalty and of the grief that comes of severing one's closest ties. With the acute insight that distinguishes all great writers, Westover has crafted a universal coming-of-age story that gets to the heart of what an education is and what it offers, the perspective to see one's life through new eyes and the will to change it. On to L. Because it is officially nonfiction November, I wanted to mention one of my favorite, favorite nonfiction books, which is Love Lucy by Lucille Ball. This is just a very funny and inspiring book about a woman who was such a pioneer in her field and she didn't have that perfect movie-like life that so many actresses, maybe they don't have it, it just seems like it, but she really had um, not just a really interesting life, but she had such a fun take on it and talking about how much work went into getting to the point of I Love Lucy, what happened in her life afterwards, filming the show, and then... Um, Finding Happiness and Love After. I've read it three or four times now, and I think it's so amazing. Landline by Rainbow Rowell. Now, somebody had said this might be a good holiday book. Let's see. I'll just read you this because I don't 
I don't know if I know what this one's about. Maybe I do and I forgot. Uh, Georgie McCool knows her marriage is in trouble, that it's been in trouble for a long time. She still loves her husband, Neil, and Neil still loves her deeply. But that almost seems beside the point now. Maybe that was always beside the point. Two days before they're supposed to visit Neil's family in Omaha for Christmas, Georgie tells Neil that she can't go. She's a TV writer and something's come up on her show. She has to stay in Los Angeles. She knows that Neil will be upset with her. Neil is always a little upset with Georgie, but she doesn't expect him to pack up the kids and go without her. When her husband and the kids leave for the airport, Georgie wonders if she's finally done it, if she's ruined everything. That night, Georgie discovers a way to communicate with Neil in the past. It's not time travel, not exactly, but she feels like she's been given an opportunity to fix her marriage before it starts. Is that what she's supposed to do? Or would Georgie and Neil be better off if their marriage never happened? That sounds really interesting, doesn't it? All right, and on to E. I don't know where I put my book. I think I either donated it or it's in storage. But the book that I read that I would recommend that starts with an E is Every Value Break by Peter Swanson. I don't remember the protagonist's name, but she's getting married for the, well, in my opinion, the wrong reasons. And she ends up going on a, she gets married knowing that she shouldn't really marry this guy and goes on this honeymoon where it's just weird. Like she gets there and there's no, um, they don't allow cell phones and there's no internet and things just start getting really weird. And she starts finding out how much this guy really probably wasn't the right one for her. And that's all I'm going to say, because I think if you're going to read a book like that, the less you know going into it, the better, the more exciting and thrilling it can be. But I really liked the book. I know some people didn't like it, but what else is new? That's just kind of how it is with books. Um, we all have different opinions about the same books, right? There's plenty of books that I love that other people hate and vice versa, but I thought it was good. So I'm going to recommend it. <laughs> Emma by Jane Austen. She would notice her. She would improve her. She would detach her from a bad acquaintance and introduce her into good society. She would form her opinions and her manners. It would be an interesting and certainly a very kind undertaking, highly becoming her own situation in life, her leisure and powers. So I started reading this book and got to page 56. I was reading it out loud um, is one of my little quests to become a voice actress. <laughs> and um, it didn't end up being too popular. Like, cause I thought people would enjoy listening, you know, to somebody read a book out loud, kind of like a book on tape, right? But um, it, did, it really didn't take off. So I just stopped doing the, the voice reading and then I stopped reading it completely, not by, not for any reason or not on purpose. I just stopped, but I was really enjoying it up to page 50. Was it, what did I say? 56. Um, but I just haven't picked it up and I probably should. Let me know if you've read this, if you think that I would like it. I love this version of it though. Look at that. Oh, so pretty. And that's it. That is my name in books that I recommend and books that I have and haven't read yet. So please let me know if you've read any of these books or any books by any of these authors and let me know what you thought. Let me know, especially with the TBR ones, are any of them worth reading? I've got some fun videos coming up, so be sure to subscribe down below and stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night. Happy reading. Bye.